G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, quite a while back I did three videos on these Techni 2000 aluminium braiding rods that I uh, picked up at a farm field day for all job repairs of zinc and aluminium alloys. <laughs> zinc. I think that zinc's the key word. I think there's a, more zinc than aluminium in these rods and maybe a, bit, a fair bit of tin. That's how they get around that uh, oxidisation issue, uh, sort of and the low temperature melt. Anyway, I never got these damn things ever to work properly. The, bro the brother will use most of them. I mean, he has sort of success with them and he's always blood some rods off on me and yep, I've only got about three of these left. Anyway, I'd given up on it and surprisingly that video, well one of those videos of the three that I did years ago gets lots and lots of interest, even though it's, <laughs> it's a, you know, like it's a total failure and uh, it's either the rod or it's me, it could be both. But anyway, I've got no faith in these whatsoever. And uh, they might be okay at demonstrations, putting, filling in holes in Coke can bottoms, but I've, I wouldn't want to trust my life to this stuff. Anyway, I cut to the chase. I was looking on the internet the other day, and in response to a, a comment from a viewer, and he said, oh, he said he's seen a video where you can braise aluminium with these, well, something similar to these, you can braise aluminium uh, to copper. And I thought, oh, can you? Because these are only aluminium as far as I know. So I did a bit of a look on the internet and I found another video where a guy used it to, to basically attach copper to aluminium. Now look, you know, I wouldn't want to hold my breath as far as how successful this is going to go. But I thought, what the hell, these rods are pretty useless. I might as well try this and I'll do what the guy did and see if these rods work. I mean, maybe these rods are shit, I don't know, but certainly I've never had any luck with these. So he, what he did was he just ran a, uh, emery tape around it, you know, sort of sanded it back with just basic um, aluminium oxide. I was trying to think of aluminium oxide, sanding paper. And he scrubbed that where he's going to put it with a uh, stainless steel brush, which I've got. And then he put it like that, and he heated it up from underneath. And he ran the rod around and blow me down. It, it, it all hung together. But whether it hung together from the, the bead contraction onto the rough surface of the aluminium, or would it actually bond in any way? He didn't put any real, you know, test on it or, you know, get brutal. So I don't know how good it was, but it did hold together. So I'm going to try this. It'll be a total waste of time, I think, but let's give it a go and see what happens. I'm doing what the man did here, and I'm running around. And this is this is pretty fairly cool stuff. So I've got good keying, you know, plenty to key into. He didn't say what grade of paper he used to, to clean it up. He just, it was all just happening as I was looking at it. So this is just, you know, pretty fine grit belt sander. Uh, old belt sander. Yeah, I'm a real skeptic when it comes... I'm not a... I mean, I hate skeptics. They're useless people in my opinion, but i got to say I'm pretty skeptical on this business, but it seemed to work all right. All right, let's give this a bit of a go. Where should we do it? Over here. Got them scrubbing this with stainless steel brush, which is uh, got aluminium melted onto it from my last attempt. All right, now he used a map gas torch. He just put it like that, and then he used the rod on it. Now I think he said it's best to put a weight on top, so I'll put something heavy on top. Okay, let's give this mother a go. This is what he did. Shit. 
Bloody aluminium. <laughs> All right. The aluminium just melted before I could get any heat into it. I left it. Yeah, something about the same thickness as this. Well, I won't put any weight on it because that's obviously bad news. This is typical Rob. I've never had any luck with these mothers, so let's give it another go. I'll leave the lead weight off. Come on. Away we go. Here we go, look. Happening. Ah. Bloody thing. When well, aluminium melts before the rod does, these rods must be extra shit or something. I don't know what's going on here. I'll try it from the top. Look at that. I've got aluminium all the way around it. Yeah, but but how good is it? Obviously this is a bit on the thin side. But it has gone around it and sort of looks like it's bonded, so what's going on? Let's try it and see that cool down. Ah, look at that. Look. Yeah. Yeah, didn't do anything. Pathetic. That's hopeless. That is friggin' hopeless. Okay, let's try another piece of aluminium, heavier, thicker, and I can put some more heat on it. That's right, fall off the bloody vice. Go on, do it. Do it. Do it. Well, that just ruined a perfectly good piece of aluminium. Look, it, look, it stuck to the aluminium. It stuck to the aluminium. Didn't stick to the copper though. I guess some thicker stuff, give it a go. I'll just have to melt that down in the furnace. The things I do for science. Ha! All right, let's try it another bit. All right. She's all cleaned up.
looking at that, it didn't look to me like it was taken to the copper at all. It uh, it might work, maybe it works better on brass, I don't know, but he used copper in the video and it's stuck to the aluminium, but I mean, how good is it? Ha! That's how bloody good it is. So forget about copper, that's not going to work, you know. It has stuck to the aluminium though this time, because I, I gave it more heat. And I've always been very wary about how much heat you can give, because aluminium melts easily. And it seems to have stuck to the copper better, uh, to, to the aluminium better this time, but it certainly doesn't stick to the the copper, look at that, that's, that's bloody useless, absolutely useless, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, the video I saw, the guy never put any pressure on it, it just went, oh look, you know, it's the copper to aluminium, how bloody good is this? Well, it's bloody hopeless as far as I'm concerned, absolutely useless. Well, there you have it, it didn't work, I didn't expect it to work, and I wasn't disappointed. The rods I've got, definitely won't do it. Now the rods that are in other videos, maybe, you know, maybe they're better, but I got my doubts about it, just how strong it really is. The uh, the composition of these rods is going to vary, you know, brand to brand, and these low temp aluminium rods are really just that uh, aluminium, and as I said at the beginning, I think there's a hell of a lot of zinc and tin in them. That's how they get around the oxidisation issue. And they do a sort of a passable job, I suppose. They can do a passable job on aluminium to aluminium, but don't expect anything else. I wouldn't be wasting them trying it out on this stuff. And I know there are specialised rods you can actually get that will uh, braze aluminium to copper. I mean, refrigeration guys use them, but they're specialised rods. They're not your basic standard low temp alley rod and anything that's demanding you know get it done with gas shielded TIG you know at least it's done properly then but I wouldn't trust my life to this to this stuff <laughs> no way no and uh, it might look okay on the surface but how good that bond is is anybody's guess but uh, yeah so at the end of the day what they used on those other videos showing how easy all this was I don't know what rods they were, and they never really said, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, no. It's a non-event. All right, that's it for me. See you next time. Cheers.